The audio mixing portion of the VR3EX is loaded with input choices and extensive channel, aux, and mastering processing. First, let's begin with the inputs and outputs on the unit's side and back panel. On the side, you will find four XLR TRS combo jacks. These inputs can accept mic signals and have phantom power optional to allow for condenser microphone use. On the back of the unit, there are line level inputs for stereo, RCA, and stereo mini jack. The RCA inputs are handy for taking in a stereo signal from DVD player or other audio device, and the mini jack is great for inputting audio from devices like iPods or laptops. The audio coming in over HDMI inputs can also be mixed. Audio outputs are located on the back of the unit. There are quarter inch TRS balanced and RCA type. Don't forget also that your audio mix is embedded to your HDMI output and to the USB stream. Now let's move to the user interface for the audio mixing section. All audio controls are situated on the left side of the VR3EX. The first four faders correspond to the XLR TRS mic level inputs on the side of the unit. Much like an analog audio console, at the top of each channel you have gain knobs, and then you continue down to your three-band EQ. For more parameters on each channel, you can press the channel setup button. When you do, a menu will appear on the touch screen. Here you will be able to adjust many more parameters, including aux send, reverb send, and pan. We will talk about what the aux is for later, but reverb is a great tool to use in live music performance. Whenever you hear a vocal performance, you always hear at least a little bit of reverb on it. Without it, vocals don't seem to blend with the mix and are referred to as dry. Notice that in the setup menu, you also have a gate and compressor. A gate basically mutes an audio channel until a sound comes through that is loud enough to go over a predetermined threshold. A good example would be to set gates for multiple mics in a panel configuration. When each speaker talks, the mic is live. When they don't, that channel is muted so you don't hear any ambient noise. There is also a compressor on each mic channel. A compressor is used on vocals to lessen the dynamic range that a person uses when they talk. It helps to maintain a constant level to keep the speaker or singer intelligible at all times. Continuing on with the setup menu, notice that there are solo and mute options at the top of the screen. There's a high pass filter and delay options at the bottom. Delay options can help with lip sync when using other devices that create latency in the video. Notice also on the menu that there are edit buttons. Press these to get even further control of the parameter. The next two faders are stereo and correspond to the RCA and mini jack inputs. Press the setup button above these faders for all their parameter controls. Above you will find HDMI level knobs. These control the stereo audio that might be present on your HDMI inputs. Press their setup button on the right to bring up their menu. You can toggle between HDMI 1 through HDMI 4 and change their parameters individually. Right by the HDMI knobs, you will find internal mic level control and setup button. Here you can control the built-in stereo microphones, which are located at the top corners of the unit. You have convenient access to a USB audio level right above the internal mic level, and headphone level to the right of that. There are two headphone jacks on the front of the unit. These allow for quarter inch and eighth inch headphone plugs. As mentioned, reverb can be added to each of the audio channels individually. The overall reverb level can easily be controlled by the knob below the phone's knob. This brings us to the main fader. The main fader allows us to control many important features including additional EQ, reverb, and mastering options. But let's highlight a few of them specifically right now. One of the new features of the VR3EX is an audio aux bus. Basically what this allows you to do is create two separate audio mixes. For example, Let's say you're using the unit in a live event, which you are also streaming. You will be sending audio to the PA system as well as to the USB for streaming. But these are very different audiences and you will want to address the online audience a little differently. Maybe you have a moderator keeping your online audience updated or would like to have some ambience mics to give them a sense of the space. This allows your online audience to feel like they are right there, which is very important for musical performance. Now, you can have these sources mixed into the USB stream without also sending them to the PA. Simply use the aux send levels in each channel setup menu to create a completely different mix. Notice on the main setup menu, there is an aux level function. This essentially serves as the master fader for the aux send mix. Also on the screen, we see a bus select option. 
Touch this option and you will be able to patch which audio mix you want to go to which audio output. For example here, we would want to make sure that our main audio output is assigned to the main bus going to the PA. And our USB audio output is assigned to our aux bus, which is intended for our online stream. As you can see, any audio output connector can be assigned to run either the main or aux bus, allowing for great flexibility. The second feature I'd like to highlight is also found in the main setup menu. Tap the audio follow option. Audio follow allows for synchronization of audio sources when changing video sources. For example, say you are in a corporate event environment. You have a speaker and a Blu-ray player for playback at various times during the event. We've all been witness to audio level coming up late, either when a person steps to a mic and nothing comes out, or when playing back video and the audio is missing for a second or two at the beginning. That usually happens as a result of a fader being down. It is important to have that fader down to avoid ambient noise coming through mics or audio from video that is being queued up. With audio follow, you don't have to worry about the fader being up or down at just the right time. Let's look at this menu and use our example to set this up. First, be sure to turn audio follow on if you want to use this feature. Along the top of the menu, you see one through four. These correspond directly to video channels one through four. On the left side of the matrix, you see all your audio channels. When audio follow is on and video one is active, only the audio channels that are green and on in column one will be live. When you switch your video to video two, only the audio channels that are on in column two will be live. Let's go back to our scenario. We have plugged our camera shooting the podium into video one and a Blu-ray player into video two. We have connected the speaker's podium mic into XLR input one. Let's also assume that our speaker will never talk when our video is on and that we have set good levels on our faders ahead of time. Column one represents our shot of the speaker at the podium, so I will turn on channel one which is the speaker's mic in that column. Touch the box and turn the value knob to turn on or off. Now for Blu-ray playback in column two. Audio and video are being sent to my HDMI 2 input, so I want to make sure this audio is live whenever video is. Now with my audio level set, I don't have to worry about muting and unmuting the right channels. The speaker's mic will be live when his camera is live, and my Blu-ray audio will be live when the Blu-ray video is live. What's better is that the audio will be faded in and out following your video transition type and time, creating seamless transitions. Obviously, this is a rather simplified example, but you can really see how helpful a tool this can be in a live production environment.